Morning everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Jan Kilstra. Today is the second day of hauling solid manure out of the corrals. Got one done yesterday. Hopefully we'll get two done today. Very ambitious. This corral had that massive puddle and we dumped a bunch of straw in there yesterday. Let the heifers back in. They mixed it up pretty good. And now we're gonna get into it. I think what I'm gonna do is grab two more buckets actually, put them in that spot that's still pretty thin. And then this curl should be pretty easy to handle in terms of scooping it out after that. So it's definitely something we're gonna do in the future. It's a lot easier than trying to mess around with one of those pumps. Did we ever waste some time on that yesterday? So hopefully we don't have to do that again. This works a bit better. We have enough straw now. That's, that's the key to that. You don't wanna be putting expensive you know, $70 bales of wheat straw in there to dry a curl out. It gets pretty expensive pretty quick. So anyway, we're gonna get a start on day two. Fetter's here as well. He's gonna be driving the tractor again. He's just cleaning the windows. And uh, yeah, should be a good day. Sun's just coming over the horizon. That'll be nice to see. The curls always dry out super quick if it's a little bit windy and sunny after you remove that muck out of there. So that's better for the cows. Pretty good start to this corral. This is three loads and we just push the rest of the muck to the side so that Fetter can drive the wagon in here with the tractor. This slop, when we fill the wagon full, it just leaks out underneath the door here, underneath this rubber liner. So what we've been doing is running the chain in reverse, pushing up against it. So I'll signal to them to run it. So what he just did there is put one of these bars hard up against that rubber liner and that's holding it shut so that we're not spilling because that happened on the first load so want to prevent that as much as we can guys have been following along with the manure haul in this spring you'll know that we have a bad tire on the bunning manure spreader right now some of the comments were suggesting that something on the inside of the tire tore like some belting or strapping 
that's like integral to the tire. Obviously our plan was to try to order a new one as quickly as possible, get it mounted, switch them out. Hopefully not gonna be too expensive. That's what we were hoping when we first saw the tire. Called around, the price, best price that we could find is 2,400 bucks. And uh, that's pretty steep, but it is an oddball tire. It's a flotation tire. People aren't stocking these things so much, so that is what it is. The only problem with that tire was it was three to six months away, optimistically. So that's how long it was gonna take to get. Well, that doesn't work for us. So then we, um, you know, we called all over the place. Also my buddy Nick in town here, Wheatland Tractor, we called them first. And uh, that was the time period for them. And everywhere else was as bad or worse. So uh, just these tires aren't anywhere. We contacted our Bunning dealer, Norheim Ranching, and they were able to get us one in a week through Bunning with a rim mounted on it. So that's like a part. And uh, unfortunately that is 4,800 bucks. That sucks, but uh, we can't be without it. So we're just gonna have to swallow that one and try to survive another day. <laughs> It's gonna be out here in a week, I believe. So pretty much just at the mercy of this tire now for the next week of hauling these corrals out, which is gonna take all of that week. We should be almost done by the time that tire shows up, but we ordered it just in case, you know, what if tomorrow it blows? At least it's part of the way here already. We don't have too much time in the spring to get these corrals emptied out before seeding. Obviously that uh, manure needs to be hauled. I guess we could technically do this any anytime though. Now that I think about it, we don't have to spread the manure over the field. So we can do it after seeding. But yeah, just a quick update for you guys. Why is stuff so expensive? 4,800 bucks. That means, well, the tires, you want to put new rubber on this wagon? That's 10 grand. Are you kidding? 10 grand? That's nuts. What has the world come to? Also, the best comment that I've seen so far while hauling manure this spring, someone said, oh look, it's a wagon full of political promises. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. We are dealing with some rain now. This corral is getting pretty slick. Everything's getting super messy, super slick. Not fun, but we're still making progress. We're not going on the road, so we don't need to make a mess on that. We're just staying in the yard, so keep going until we finish this corral. And then I think we're gonna have to put some bedding in. I hope the boss man will start that, but we'll see. It is getting muddy out here. The rain has turned to snow. Just nasty. frustrating we did not finish this one corral today uh, corral six is notorious though for being the largest volume of manure the bread heifer pen so I'd say we're about 30% cleaning the corrals out now but it is snowing so much and we got to put bedding in the corrals now better stop early and bed all the corrals then go late with all the manure and not get bedding in the cows and the corrals that have not been cleaned out yet there's the boss man, he's ready to go. I'm gonna go park this loader. Put on some warmer gear. It's pretty nasty out here right now. Some snow. Yeah. 
good for the ride. Unreal. Sucks for everything else though. Struggling to get on the straw pack there. So we haven't got to cleaning this one out yet. Which is ideal. If you're in wet years, which we had in the early 2010s, you know, 2010, I think we had 43 inches of rain in one year, which is, seems impossible right now, but it'll probably come back again in the future. And if you're in those wetter years, it's probably a good idea to leave your straw pack in the corral over the course of summer, take it out in fall because this kind of gives the animals out here a bit of an island to stand on. You can always put bedding in when it rains. This is what you call a mess, folks. We'll get through it. Get these animals some nice bedding. I don't know if we're gonna haul manure out tomorrow morning, but we'll see. I don't see why not. Looking at our 24 hour forecast here. This evening, we're supposed to get 15 mils of rain. That's obviously gonna come in the form of snow. So depending on whether or not that shows up, we could wake up to quite a bit of snow. Finished putting bedding in the curls there, went pretty good. I am gonna switch our barns over into uh, winter ventilation mode again. It's supposed to get pretty cold over the next week at night. One night is even forecast to get minus 11 degrees Celsius, so. Can't have the barn open for that. It's not gonna get warm at all during the day. Put it back into winter ventilation. It's just part of the process. Going from winter to summer around here. Winter will kick back at you every once in a while like it does now. Pretty simple. We'll turn these guys off. I have two on per side. They're on automatic mode, but if I flick that red switch, it turns them off 100%. And the rest I just got to do from the ventilation control box, which is in our electrical room. And this thing right here. Maintenance. Manual override. Relays. Auto. Auto. Chimneys are exhausting. I can hear them turning on, so... Just like that, this whole barn is switched over to winter vent. So I just mentioned minus 11 at night. If anyone knows anything about fall rye, let me know what your opinion would be on our fall rye experiencing minus 11 for a night. It started growing, definitely the rye got green. You know, we had a couple days where it got like 17 degrees above freezing. Is that minus 11 night gonna hurt the rye? I bet, it, I bet it's not going to be great for it. I don't know, it worries me a lot. Both barns are now in winter ventilation mode. Got everything closed off. And we're ready for whatever weather is going to come at us the next couple of days. So that means that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. It really helps the channel out. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.